With just a little knowledge for algebra, we know how to factorize quadratic polynomials. But what happens when we use the quadratic equation and it gives us imaginary roots? We can't see them on the real plane. So where are they? In a quadratic polynomial, the highest order of a variable is 2. I assume you already know how to factorize a polynomial. When we factorize the expression on the left, we find it has value 0 when either x minus r1 or x minus r2 is equal to 0. Let's examine the function value of this example. To do so, we will plot the x value on the horizontal axis and the function value f of x on the vertical axis. Evaluating for the variable x means we record the corresponding function output for each x input. The points where the function equals 0 are called the roots. Let's, so let's try this with a slightly different function. Once more, we walk the x-axis and note the corresponding function value for each input x. However, in this case, no roots are visible. The quadratic formula tells us there must always be two roots, so where are they? When we apply the quadratic formula, and apply our knowledge of, of, of the square root of negative 1 is j, or i, we find that the roots are indeed complex. But we shouldn't only consider real input values, or x. Instead, we should broaden our perspective and consider complex input values. Let's rewrite the polynomial as function f, where the input value z consists of real part x combined with imaginary part j times y. The expansion of the x-axis creates a complex plane. We can now visualize these complex roots onto the complex plane. But by allowing complex variables, we also have to allow complex outputs for the function. However, we only have one dimension left on our graph. Just as before, we're looking to visualize the curve where the function is real. For the function value to be real, the imaginary part must be zero. Applying the product rule from earlier, either y needs to be zero, or x needs to be negative b over 2a. In the first case, this implies that the input variable must be real. By substituting the variable zr back into the polynomial, we get the familiar polynomial expression. When we walk the values for the x-axis, we get the same curve for the function value that we saw before. Now, let's take a look at the second case that results in real function value outputs. Again, we substitute the condition for x into the generic variable z. We find that the variable needs to be evaluated over a line parallel to the y-axis. When we plot the values for the variable z, c, which is shown in yellow, we can see the line parallel to the y axis. Evaluating the polynomial for these input values gives us a plot of the imaginary function. The plot intersects a complex plane at the two roots that we calculated earlier. This means that the plot of a quadratic function is really just two intersecting parabolas. I hope what you learned helped you understand quadratic polynomials and how they always have a double parabola. Hopefully this helps your understanding on the topic and will help you in the future.